morning and welcome to the Planning and Zoning Meeting Commission. Today's date is Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. This meeting will now come to order. Uh, we'll begin with a moment of silence. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, Chair, and before I call the roll, I would like to announce that Commissioner Summers requested to be excused, and I will mark him so. Apking? Here. Benny? Here. Latana? Here. Marker? Here. Severson? Here. York? Here. King? Here. Schwartz? Here. Eight present, one excused. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item five, approval of minutes, a copy of the February 1st, 2023 minutes, and the special meeting on the February 17th, 2023 uh, minutes were included for review in your backup material. Uh, is there any discussion regarding these minutes? May I have a motion to approve the February 1st, 2023 minutes as presented? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Cortana. Second. Second by Commissioner Apkin to approve the February 1st, 2023 minutes as presented. Madam City Clerk, will you call the roll? Apke? Aye. Benny? Aye. Botana? Aye. Marker? Aye. Severson? Aye. York? Aye. Schwartz? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Thank you. Is there any discussion regarding the February 17th, 2023 minutes? Or do we have a motion to approve as presented? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Apkin. Second. Second by Commissioner Botana. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Apkin. Aye. Benny. Yes. Botana. Yes. Marker. Aye. Severson. Aye. York. Aye. Schwartz. Aye. All ayes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, next up on the agenda is item six, uh, business. This is the election of the chair and the vice chair moving forward. Uh, we'll start with chair, um, and we'll open up that for nominations. No seconds will be needed. Uh, the responsibility of the chair is preside over the meeting as I am doing today, uh, and you may nominate yourself as well. Do we have any nominations from the commission? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate you for reappointment to the chair position. I'd like to nominate uh, Don Ap Apking. Apking, okay. Do we have any other nominations from the commission? Seeing none, we have two nominations. Uh, City Clerk, could we tally, run a tally for each of those? So when I call your name, please either say Apking or Marker. Apking? Apking. Benny? Marker. Botana? Apking. Marker? Marker. Severson? Apking. York? Marker. Schwartz? Marker. Three for Apking, four for Marker. Thank you. Uh, could we have a motion to approve uh, myself, Commissioner Marker, as chair? Motion yeah. to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner second. Apkin and a second by Commissioner Schwartz. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Apking? Aye. Benny? Aye. Botana? Aye. Marker? Aye. Severson? Aye. York? Aye. Schwartz? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to vice chair. Uh, we'll do that in the same uh, fashion that we did for chair. Do we have any motions for vice chair? I'd like to nominate Don Apkin. Commissioner uh, Apkin? Apkin? Okay. Second. Any other nominations for vice chair? So we only have one nomination, City Clerk. Uh, we want to turn it into a motion. Oh, can we uh, have a motion to approve Commissioner Afkin as Vice Chair? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Botana. Do we have second? A second. Second by Commissioner Schwartz. 
Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Apkin? Aye. Benny? Aye. Otana? Aye. Marker? Aye. Severson? Aye. York? Aye. Schwartz? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Thank you. Uh, so we will move on to agenda item six. Uh, this is the AHAC appointment. Um, uh, we'll now open the floor to commissioners that have interest uh, in either representing themselves on the uh, AHAC commission or uh, would like to appoint somebody to do so. I'm already on the commission, the Affordable Housing Commission, so I don't know if that helps the decision at all. We could certainly seek to reappoint you to that position. Yeah, but you're not the PNC representative. You're there as a, a, a as a what a contractor. Right. right. Yeah, I didn't know if that made it any no, easier. You can't do double to. double service, so it would have to be, <laughs> you know, yeah, somebody from from the specifically from the planning and zoning. Do we have any other commissioners that would like to serve on the AHAC commission? Commissioner York? Okay, fantastic. Uh, do we have any other commissioners aside from Commissioner York? Seeing none, uh, we'll put that to a vote. Do we have a motion to approve Commissioner York as the AHAC representative for the commission? So moved. Com uh, motion made by Commissioner Benny. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Botana. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Apke? Aye. Benny? Yes. Botana? Yes. Marker? Aye. Severson? Aye. York? Aye. Schwartz? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Thank you. Uh, we will move on to item seven, uh, open public hearings. Uh, we'll start with item 7A, ordinance 14-23. Does the city have a presentation? I'll turn it over to the city. Commercial professional uh, land use designation to the mixed use designation. So we've got a couple of maps that are in front of you here. On the left hand side, you can see the existing future land use of the property and the surrounding property. The existing future land use is commercial professional. The surrounding land use to the north is industrial. To the south, across Kismet Parkway. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I don't see a map. There we go. Ah, there we go. All right. So I'll start over. To the north, this is the existing land use surrounding. To the north, you have industrial. To the east, to the west, and to the south, you have commercial professional. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, multifamily and single family residential that is located to the south. And then the applicant's request is an amendment to mixed use for the eight parcels as indicated in orange. So some findings of fact for this. Uh, these are eight undeveloped properties that are near, they're just a uh, little east of the intersection of Andalusia Boulevard and Kismet Parkway. It is, we mentioned earlier, it's just south of the Andalusia Industrial Park. Uh, all parcels are a little over 10,000 square feet, uh, totaling to around two acres, a uh, little over two acres. Uh, the site has retained the commercial professional land use since 20, 2010, and it has retained the commercial zoning since 2011. Uh, we mentioned that there are utilities that are available to the site. The applicant has indicated that they are seeking this amendment in order to uh, further to construct sort of a, a closet manufacturer business down the road. In order to make that happen, they would need a rezone at a future time to uh, a different zone district than the commercial because it would be a manufacturing business. They would need a rezone in order to build that. However, that being said, this is just a land use amendment to, to mixed use. So the existing commercial professional land use has a maximum floor area ratio of 1.0. Uh, based upon that FAR, you'd be looking at a commercial square footage of a little over 90,000 square feet if it was developed at its full intensity, which things are rarely developed within Cape Coral at that intensity. Uh, and there is no residential units that are allowed within the commercial professional land use. 
The mixed use land use also has a maximum FAR of 1.0, so you'd be looking at the, at the same 90,000 square feet of commercial development if it was developed to its full max potential. There is some density that was allowed within the mixed use development. Uh, the maximum density that would be allowed on these eight parcels would be 53 units. The mixed use district, the mixed use land use actually is compatible with nearly every zoning district within the city of Cape Coral. So at a later time, if the applicant chose to do so, the commercial, the commercial district, the commercial zoning district is still compatible with the mixed use. However, if they were seeking to build something different than a commercial business, then they would have to seek a, a rezone. Uh, they could do residential, they could do industrial, they could do uh, professional office, really any sort of zoning district is compatible with the mixed use designation. Uh, so we looked at this first with policy 1.13 of the comprehensive plan. Uh, we looked at commercial nodes. Uh, this site has already got commercial designation both within the future land use and the zoning. Uh, the site is about 215, 215 feet east of the commercial node at Andalusia Boulevard and Kismet Parkway. Uh, the policy states that not, commercial nodes can extend outward if, it's, if parcels are not directly at an intersection. There is commercial professional land use that extends uh, from that intersection to this site, so staff finds this is at a commercial node. Uh, we also looked at the appropriateness of the mixed-use designation for this. This is uh, a peculiar amendment in the sense that we don't get a lot of privately initiated amendments to go from commercial professional to mixed-use. Um, we didn't look at, we looked at the, what the commercial siting guidelines were. It's already commercial. It meets most of those guidelines in terms of being at a major intersection. Uh, frontage, the shape of the parcel, it has some assemblage in that all eight are owned uh, in conjunction. Staff finds that the site is suited for commercial, industrial, and mixed-use development. We mentioned it's already adjacent to the Andalusia Industrial Park, so it could be an extension of that uh, industrial area. Uh, you have non-residential land use that extends in all four directions. Uh, the site may not be suitable for standalone residential based upon the fact that you have commercial to the east, west, and then you have industrial right to the north, so you don't necessarily want to see uh, standalone residential units to be located in that, but if there was mixed use, that could also work as well. Uh, so really, it's suitable for either the commercial professional land use or it's suitable for the mixed use designation. Uh, the applicant has asked for that mixed use designation for this, and staff finds it's compatible with the comprehensive plan and the surrounding area, and we recommend approval of the uh, applicant's request for the mixed use designation. I'm here for any further questions. Thank you, Chad. Is the applicant available or a representative available that wishes to speak? Good morning. Good morning. We'll wait for you to get over to the podium. Good morning. Uh, my name is James Morey. I'm a, an, an attorney and I represent Gulf Coast Closets, the, uh, the petitioner, and we have the uh, authority and permission and consent of the, the, the landowner who owns the eight parcels. And, um, the gentleman did an excellent presentation. I'm not sure what I can add to that. I might just add some um, uh, context. So yes, eventually uh, this, this, this property is under contract and there's a contingency to have it rezoned ultimately to industrial land for light, light industry, a cabinet uh, business. And this is a necessary step to get to that point. And, but I'm here to answer any questions. And again, really appreciate your time. Thank you. This is, a, this is a public hearing. If there's any members of the public or the audience that wish to be heard this time, please direct yourself to the podium and state your full name for the record. Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. I'll open up to the commission. Are there any questions from the commission? Yeah, Commissioner Botan? I have some, and I'm new at this, so I... Uh, some of my questions might be naive, but uh, at least it'll go towards my education, if not anything else. Uh, Mr. Bertana, if you would uh, turn your mic on, oh, it'll make it easier for everyone. Sure, thank you. Uh, I, I see in the write-up that the, the zoning has been changed several times from uh, either multifamily or whatever to commercial to so forth. Is there is there some rationale why we'd go back to a, to a class of zoning that would allow residential on the property? Uh, well, the, the, I mean, the mixed use allows for a variety of things. The, that mixed use designation allows for a variety of things. It, the, it, what it doesn't do, it, it does not allow for uh, standalone residential. It'd have to be within a mixed use development. 
um, if it was within something like uh, if it was a PUD. It, it, it's really what, it's up to the applicant. I mean, they're they're choosing to change it to something that you know fits what they're looking to do with the property. Uh, staff would have been fine if it developed as commercial, but the applicant uh, they're looking to do something that they feel is appropriate for the area, and then staff finds that this is sort of that necessary step to get to building that manufacturing business. Yeah, it sounds like he wanted to build a manufacturing business. I wonder why it wouldn't go to light industrial or rather than the multi-use. I uh, I mean it. It, the, the mixed use does give them a little bit more flexibility in terms of if something falls through uh, with the cabinet manufacturing business. Uh, they could have they could have gone to industrial. They could have gone to mixed use. I mean, both get both get them there. It still requires a rezone no matter what. So it, I mean, it it does it, it does the trick both ways. Yeah, I, I I drove by this all of the sites just because I'm trying to get myself educated, and it seemed to me that on that side of Kismet that it would make more sense for it to be light industrial or commercial rather than any kind of residential whatsoever. So I, I, that, that's the reason I asked the question. If, if light industrial would make it light industrial rather than the options you get with multi multi use, if that was a if that was a better fit for this. So I I just thought I'd raise the question for, since it went through my mind. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner York. Hi, thank you. I, I kind of had the, my initial thought was very similar. So mixed use allows light industrial, mm -hmm. but the commercial professional really did not. Correct. And also mixed use would only allow up to 20% to be, it would be medium density um, residential, but only 20% and it's not a huge, <coughs> piece of property anyway. Correct. So, and, and, and my other question was already answered by the man who represents the closet company. I was wondering why they were the applicant, but I figured that I didn't know it was actually under contract, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and I did drive by it too. It does look like it would make sense to be light industrial there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Commissioner Benny. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just had a general question while you're up there, Chad. Is that isn't CP commercial professional kind of on the on the downslope in the opinion of the planning division? It seems like you're moving away from that in several different areas because it's just not been functioning very well as a. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that commercial professional is. We're moving away from that. I think in terms of what you've seen, maybe it's better referenced in the sense that we have at times been uh, perhaps, especially like in 2010 when there was a referendum on land use cases that was gonna be on the ballot, staff was uh, slightly overzealous in trying to grab as many things to go to commercial professional as, as possible. So if you're seeing some recent amendments where it's taking properties from commercial professional to something different, it could have been an effort, you know, 12, 13 years later to correct some of that overzealousness in designating properties as commercial professional. It, it, a commercial professional functions perfectly well for what it is. I mean, it's your, your basic standard commercial land use within the city of Cape Coral. It's just that perhaps there are sites that uh, aren't as suitable for that designation and maybe they're more suitable as residential based upon whether there's already existing residential development there. It doesn't have the frontage or the assemblage that you're looking for. Um, and so that may be what you're seeing in terms of the trend of properties going away from commercial professional. It's not that how it doesn't function as a commercial land use. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. It's just we're trying to find areas that are most suitable for the designation that they need. Thank you. I appreciate that. Commissioner Schwartz. Yeah, I just, I, I look at this and, and I see across the street there's residential, there's single family homes over there. How do we avoid having a, a manufacturing plant across the street from houses? I mean, do, do we look into that when we're doing this? I mean, I, I don't understand. Well, the, the houses that are directly across the street south of Kismet Parkway, um, they're legally non-conforming uses because they're within commercial professional future land use. Um, I, I think there, there will be 
If this goes to industrial, there will be some buffering that's required along the roadway. Uh, there will be some, some things in terms of screening that will be required within this. Um, you know, I think based on, you've already got, you've already got industrial that is, um, you know, 80 feet away to the north within the industrial park there. Um, but in that buffered yeah. by trees and whatnot, you can't really see that from the residential homes. It, it's Correct, blocked. and there would be there would be buffering that would be that would be required with any development that goes in on so these they, parcels. If they build as well. it along the street, and I live across the street, what is the buffering? Uh, it would be. I'm thinking you've probably got a 10 to 15 foot uh, buffer that would be located along the right of way, in terms of trees and shrubs. Industrial to commercial as a, I don't know the exact buffer off the top of my head, but I mean, there's a pretty substantial buffer that goes along when you're building anything industrial that's not adjacent to our existing industrial property. Okay. Do we have any other comments from the commission? Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve ordinance 14-23 made by Commissioner Apkin. Second by Commissioner York. Madam City Clerk, will you call the roll? Apking? Aye. Benny? Aye. Otana? Aye. Marker? Aye. Severson? Aye. York? Aye. Schwartz? Nay. Six ayes, one nay. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item 7B, ordinance 18-23. I'll turn it over to the city. Okay. Once again, Chad Boyko, principal planner with the city's planning division. This is ordinance 18-23. This is another privately initiated small scale future land use map amendment. There are two applicants for this. It is Lee Memorial Health System and Haunch Incorporated. Uh, it's about five properties that are located along Pine Island Road to the south of Pine Island Road. The size of the site is a little, is a little under 42 acres. Uh, there are utilities within that are available to the site. There would be, this would be served by the city of Cape Coral sewer, and then this also would be served by the Greater Pine Island Water Association. So this request is a future land use map amendment from a Lee County designation in order to the Pine Island Road District. Uh, this is the sort of second step in making these properties able to be developed within the city of Cape Coral. Uh, last month or the month previous, there was an annexation that was approved for these properties that was approved by city council. Uh, now, uh, the second step is you have to have a future land use map amendment to bring these properties into the city of Cape Coral comprehensive plan, future land use map. And then the third step that will come later down the road will be a rezone uh, to a city of Cape Coral designation. So the future land use map of the property uh, on the left that's existing, it's currently within the Lee County designation. Anytime properties are annexed in from Lee County to the city of Cape Coral, they still retain the future land use designation and their zoning designation until they are changed by city council. That's why you see that it's located in gray. It's not industrial, that is Lee County designation. Uh, the properties that are to the north and to the, to the east and uh, are within the city of Cape Coral designation of Pine Island Road District. There are some properties that are to the west and to the south, uh, most notably to the area to the south is the Royal T. Uh, subdivision or Cape Royal, whatever it is called uh, nowadays. Uh, and those are still within the Lee County, er, Lee County, unincorporated Lee County. So our analysis, we looked at this per policy 1.15, which is the Pine Island Road District. Uh, this allows for a maximum FAR of 1.25. Uh, if this was developed to its full potential, and there is already some existing development on this site, uh, the Haunch uh, business they have, uh, they operate out of that, uh, out of a, one or two parcels within that site. But if this were to be fully developed at its maximum commercial square footage, you'd be looking at uh, a little over two and a quarter million square feet. Once again, that is, you know, uh, not realistic in, in the sense that most properties within Cape Coral develop at um, usually about an FAR of about 0.25. So you'd be looking at a much smaller uh, scale of commercial development. But we do like to give you a, a full scope of what could be developed on this site. The maximum density that is allowed within the Pineland Road District is 25 units per acre. So if this were developed at its maximum density, you'd be looking at a little over 1,000 uh, multifamily units that could be developed on this site. Uh, we looked at this policy uh, with our, or we looked at this site with the Conference of Plan, policy 1.13, which is commercial nodes, uh, which seeks to locate commercial development at or along major intersections. 
The site is not directly at a major intersection. It is 550 feet west of Veterans Parkway and the Pineland Road intersection. Uh, the policy states that you can have nodes that extend outward from these intersections. And except for the parcels that are within the, that are to the, to the west of this, that are within Lee County, you do have a continuous stretch of Pineland Road District that extends from that intersection up to the site and then all the way along Pineland Road. So this is really the predominant land use that you see uh, within the city of Cape Coral that's along Pineland Road. Uh, and so staff finds that this is an extension of the commercial node at the uh, Veterans Parkway and Pineland Road intersection. We also looked at this per policy 1.14, which is our commercial siting guidelines. Uh, staff finds that the site is consistent with six of these guidelines. They are major intersection, which is what we kind of discussed earlier. Uh, the site does have adequate depth. It has, uh, the policy states that you're looking for sites that are 250 feet uh, deep or more. This well exceeds that 250 feet of depth. Uh, the sites are compact. They have a nice sort of rectangular shape to them. Uh, there is uh, potential for integration between the sites with each other. If they were kind of developed in conjunction, you could see where there would be some integration between the sites. Uh, you have some assembly that's going along with this. You have assembly, assemblage of more than three acres or more. And then once again, ownership pattern kind of goes along with, with the assemblage is that you have common ownership of three acres or more within uh, the site that you're looking at. Staff also finds that the site is partially consistent with two guidelines, which are intrusion and access. And our recommendation is that we looked at this with the comforts of plan in the surrounding area and staff recommends approval of the request to amend the site to the Pineland Road uh, future land use designation. I'm here for any further questions. Thank you, Chad. Uh, is the applicant here and wishing to speak? I've got some slides I could share as well. Um, and if you would please state your name for the rest sure. of this. My name is Christine Fisher. I'm principal planner with Johnson Engineering, representing the applicants. Good morning. Um, so as I said, I am uh, Christine Fisher. I am principal planner with Johnson Engineering, and I'm here representing the two sets of applicants, Lee Memorial Health Systems and Haunch Industries. And the subject property, as Chad mentioned, is just under 42 acres. Three parcels, the ones on the west, are owned by Haunch Industries. The two parcels on the east are owned by Lee Memorial Health Services. Four of the parcels are vacant. Um, the, the location at 2900 Southwest Penn Island Road is the Haunch um, site where they have an 820 square foot uh, construction office and some outdoor storage. And as Chad mentioned, this was voluntary, voluntarily annexed in November of 2022. <clears throat> as part of the annexation, um, the county land use and zoning go forward with the annexation until such time as the city council adopts a comprehensive plan amendment. Um, so this is the step that we're doing to get it in line with city designation. Um, the request is to amend the future land use map designation from Lee County rural designation to Cape Coral Pine Island Road District. Uh, um, future land use map, as Chad mentioned, Surrounding properties to the north and the east are already designated Pine Island Road District. And then the properties that are within Lee County are rural, and that is immediately across Royalty Boulevard and then also to the south across Royalty Circle. Other properties that were recently annexed further to the west near Veterans Boulevard and um, Southwest Pine Island Road intersection have also been given the Pine Island Road District designation. Uh, we feel that designating the subject parcels as uh, PIRD is PIRD is consistent with the designation of the adjacent parcels and the uh, future land use pattern along the corridor. 
I won't go through these in detail because Chad already mentioned them, um, but we also agree that uh, this request falls in line with policy 1.13, commercial nodes, 1.14 in the siting guidelines, and then 1.15M, uh, Pine Island Road District. It also meets the commercial corridor criteria. Um, we have already submitted uh, simultaneously in conjunction with us a request to rezone the property to commercial corridor. This also encourages the development of future commercial along the, along the corridor. Um, other policies within the future land use element that this uh, is consistent with would be policy 3.1, encouraging future commercial areas near transportation nodes. This is within 1,000 feet of that intersection of the primary or the principal arterials of Veterans Parkway, Burnt Shore Road, and Southwest Pine Island Road. Um, policy 3.3, the application of commercial areas along commercial corridors at key locations. Uh, 3.4, um, considering uh, FLUM amendments that provide for retail office services as appropriate. And then 3.6, which is the Pine Island Road corridor master plan and directing growth along that corridor. So in summary, we, um, we believe that this supports the goals, objectives, and policies of Cape Coral's comprehensive plan, that it's compatible with the surrounding development pattern and directly supports the, uh, the vision for the Pine Island Road district, prepares the city for future growth, and then requesting that the Planning and Zoning Commission forward the petition to City Council with a recommendation of approval for the proposed flu amendment as recommended by city staff. Thank you. Thank you. This is a uh, public hearing. I'd like to now open to the public. If there's any members of the audience wishing to speak, please direct yourself to the podium and state your name for the record. Good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Slingloff, and I appreciate the opportunity to just ask a few questions. I'm not sure if this is the, uh, the right time or venue for that, but um, on the property, can uh, you tell me if Bo it, is Lee Memorial, I think, initially bought the two, two parcels closest to Sandoval Parkway, and now I'm not sure if the, if it's pronounced Honch, if they're looking to sell that property and make all those parcels available to Lee Health. So we wouldn't be answering your questions directly. You can direct your comments to the commission um, and we can discuss that in our discussions with the city as well. Okay, rookie here. So um, right. th right that, that's, a, that's a question. Then also would, would I be able to address where the entrance for that, uh, the Lee Health portion of it, does that come on Pine Island Road? Um, <clears throat> and will there be any kind of access from the Sandoval Parkway side of that parcel of property? Another question. And then also, uh, when that prop, what, what the footprint of that property would be for Lee Health, and then um, understanding what the buffer would be between Sandoval Parkway and um, the building on that parcel of property. Okay. And I think that's pretty much what I had. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Do any other members of the audience wish to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. We'll open up to the commission. Uh, do we have any comments from the commissioners? I, I, you, do you want me to respond? As yeah, I was I, just, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you would. Th this is the first step. This is the, uh, the land use to change. So there are no real plans coming in yet as to location of buildings, access, or anything else. Right now, you're looking at about 50,000 square foot, I mean 50,000 square, I mean 50,000 foot level, and it's basically changing the land use to a, Lee, a from a Lee County designation to a City of Cape Coral designation to get to an ultimate use, and we haven't got to that use yet. There's going to be zoning that needs to take place. Then there's going to be, depending on what type of development is going to be on there, whether there may be a PUD, maybe there may be, may, you know, might have to be other public hearings. We don't know. But right now, there is no plan for anything that is before you. All that is before you 
is actually changing the land use to a Cape Coral designation. That's right. So to answer the question, this is the second step in a multiple step process uh, of eventual development, possibly at some point. Um, and the details will come more and more as we reach closer to that final development plan. Um, so we wouldn't have those answers today. Uh, I do see Commissioner York, would you like to make a comment? Actually, it's um, more of a comment. I don't know, it, because it sounds like the answer won't be forthcoming today to this, but given the way that we proceed to develop, this is actually for the city, um, we develop the Pine Island Industrial, or the Pine Island Commercial Corridor, um, it's unlikely that, I would think, that there would be access directly from Pine Island. It would be from probably one of the two roads that, if there's a big, let's say, a health facility, which we don't know, I know that at this point, but it would probably be from one of those two roads, either the, from where the uh, Royal T or from the Sandoval Parkway, I would think you would come in and then make a turn. Isn't that the most likely scenario or? Uh, I, probably not actually. I would imagine that you would want to have um, Pine Island Road. There might be some, and this is, I don't want to get too too far away from what the actual point of the land use amendment is. Pine Island Road, I think there are some access restrictions, but it's not like uh, Burnstow Road where it's um, heavily access restricted. Uh, my guess is that Sandoval Parkway is probably a private roadway and there may be some issues with that. Um, most of the things that you see developing on Pine Island Road still have access from Pine Island Road to this day. It doesn't have the okay. access point restrictions that uh, say a Burnstow Road does. Oh, okay. That's helpful to know. It actually, the apartments come off of that Sandoval Parkway Road. I think it is- Because they were developed within the Sandoval uh, area. They're, they were part of the PDP that originally developed Sandoval. Okay. So they, have, they had some sort of uh, common uh, development interests at that time. Okay. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Benny. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Brian, when there's an annexation like, like this, it's, it's, I find it uh, a little confusing as to how it works when private property owners like Hanch and Lee Memorial Health System have property that's in the county and then it becomes part of the city that obviously confers a benefit of the services and everything that they're going to receive. Um, does those property owners initiate the annexation? How does that process work? Yes, they, <clears throat> they have an application for voluntary to voluntarily annex into the city. Uh, the city has never done an involuntary annexation. It's always been voluntary. These enclaves came about back in 1970 when the city became a city and landowners at that time sued to get out of the city. So they, they created enclaves. So now the present owners want to come in and if they want to come in, there's a process through the state statutes that allow them to voluntary annex into the city. And there's a whole process that that's occurred and that's already happened. So this is the next step for that because as uh, Chad testified to and, the, and uh, the representative from Johnson Engineering testified to, the statute states that all of Lee County's land use and zoning stays until we, the city, go ahead and, and change it. So that's what, that's what we're doing now. So Thank yeah. you very much for that answer. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Any other comments from the commission? Seeing none, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve ordinance 18-23 made by Commissioner Schwartz. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Severson. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Apking? Aye. Benny? Aye. Botana? Aye. Marker? Aye. Severson? Aye. York? Aye. Schwartz? Aye. All ayes, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item 7C, ordinance 24-23. Uh, does the city have a presentation? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We'll turn over to the city.
Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission members. For the record, Mike Struve, Planning Team Coordinator with the City Planning Division. This case, the city is serving as the applicant, so this is a city-initiated future land use map amendment. This particular request uh, covers 10 properties. They're all rather small, so collectively the area of the 10 sites is 3.26 acres. All 10 sites uh, are located rather centrally in Cape Coral uh, between Pine Island Road and Tropicana Parkway. This is an outline of the city boundaries of the, of the uh, city. Uh, the red dot here shows the location of these uh, 10 sites. Aerial map shows the uh, location a little bit more clearly here. Again, north of Pine Island, south of Tropicana Parkway, and just a short distance west of Andalusia Boulevard. These 10 sites are rather small they are either two or three lot platted sites, so the largest of these sites would be 15,000 square feet. Three of the 10 sites are developed with single family homes. The other seven sites are vacant. If you look at surrounding uses within this 500 uh, foot noticing area, you have sing scattered single family homes to the uh, west. Uh, there is one commercial development immediately to the east of the subject parcels. Farther south uh, is the former Golden Corral restaurant to give you sort of a, uh, a vantage point of where this is located. And then to the north, there's sort of a mix of uses. All 10 of the sites uh, currently have single family residential zoning or R1 zoning in the existing uh, future land use classification is the Pine Island Road District future land use classification. So up until 2019, the single family residential zoning district was considered to be consistent with the Pine Island Road District future land use classification. And then roughly in 2019, we changed our comprehensive plan and we, in order, in order really to be more protective of our commercial lands, uh, we made it very clear in our comp plan that the single family residential zoning district and all residential zoning districts uh, were inconsistent with the Pine Island Road District future land use classification. So what that did in this particular case, and this occurred in, with, with some other properties as well, is it uh, resulted in an inconsistency between the existing zoning, in this case R1, and the Pine Island Road District future land use classification. So right now, uh, anyone wanting to develop these properties cannot uh, be issued a permit until that zoning and land use inconsistency is, is resolved. And there's two ways to go about that. One would be to change the land use which we are recommending in this case to change it to the single family future land use classification. The other potential option would actually be to change the zoning. And in this case, since the commercial corridor zoning district is the only zoning district consistent with the Pine Island Road District future land use classification, we would be changing it to that mixed use zoning district. We looked at anticipated uh, service impacts associated with this land use change and first um, looking at some of the underlying assumptions uh, looking at the Pine Island Road District future land use classification uh, the land use classification itself allows a maximum floor area ratio which is a measure of the, how intensely a commercial site can be developed it allows a maximum FAR of 1.25 however the commercial quarter district allows a maximum FAR of 1 so we've used that in our, in our calculations. We also assume that each site would be developed at an FAR of 0.25, which we find to be uh, most likely given development patterns in the city. Chad mentioned for some of his cases, and I think he might have even reported uh, an FAR of one for some of their service impact, uh, his service impact analysis. So if you wanted to, see what the maximum entitlements associated with these properties 
would be you would multiply this 35,480 square feet, which represents an FAR of 0.25, multiply that by a factor of four to see what theoretically um, could be developed on these sites based on their maximum entitlements. For the single family future land use classification, that's a little bit more straightforward. That future land use classification allows a maximum of 4.4 dwelling units per acre. And we're assuming that each site under this future land use classification would be developed with one single family home for each of the 10 sites. And what we've done here, uh, this is a summary of our analysis and our staff report, which goes into uh, greater detail. But I think this suffices here in terms of what we are trying to convey in terms of analyzing the proposed single family future land use classification with the existing Pine Island Road District. If you look at the proposed single family future land use classification, that would, would result if it was approved in an increase in the number of dwelling units slight increase in population and, and a slight increase in impacts to local schools based on the number of school-aged children that would be uh, supported by this change. Likewise, uh, if you look at impacts to utilities, the amount of potable water, sewer, solid waste to band would be considerably lower under the proposed single family, future land use classification, and the number of peak hour trips would also be considerably lower. We've analyzed uh, this case uh, in conjunction with a couple of policies appearing in our comprehensive plan. Both policies you heard Chad talk about earlier. The first is policy 1.13, which deals with commercial nodes. And we find that these 10 properties um, combined with lots on the east side of Block 2005, which are adjacent to Andalusia Boulevard, are located at a major intersection. And these, the subject area could be considered a, a, a commercial node. However, in, based on our analysis, it would be considered a rather weak commercial node. And there's several reasons for that, which I'll get into here. One is that uh, this policy, in addition to proximity to a major intersection, also outlines other elements that are considered desirable for commercial nodes. One of those is depth. All of these sites lack depth. They, they do not exhibit full block depth. And in addition to that, they are, would be prevented from achieving full block depth because of a presence of a platted alley that divides the subject block into east and west halves. You also have fragmented ownership patterns. So there is, um, at least at this point, uh, no indication that property assembly uh, has occurred. The city would also have very limited ability to have control over driveway access because all of these properties have frontage on a local street where uh, we have more permissive standards in terms of where driveways can be placed as, as opposed to an arterial or collector road. So again, to in, in summarizing our analysis of this policy, the subject area would be considered a commercial node, but rather a, a weak commercial node at that. We've also analyzed uh, this particular case in conjunction with policy 1.14, which provides eight commercial siting guidelines. And in general, there is not a magic number of guidelines that need to be met for staff to recommend a, a future land use amendment change. But in this particular case, and looking at commercial siting guidelines, if the subject area met the majority of the commercial siting guidelines, that would indicate it would be a good candidate either for a mixed use or a commercial future land use uh, change. And in this case, we wouldn't be talking about changing it. We would talk about, we would be recommending retaining that Pine Island Road District future land use classification. Likewise, if it only met a couple, two, three uh, of the commercial siting guidelines, that would suggest that the existing Pine Island Road District future land use classification was not a good fit for the properties and might indicate that a different future land use classification would be more appropriate. 
when we analyzed this case in conjunction with those commercial siting guidelines we found that the proposed amendment met two guidelines one for major intersection and the other for compactness as these properties are all rather square rectangular in shape the proposed amendment failed to meet six guidelines which included adequate depth integration assembly intrusion access and ownership pattern based on this policy the site does appear to be better suited for a for residential development for a, a change to a residential future land use classification lastly we looked at the suitability of this area for a change to the single family future land use classification and factors that support that change uh, include the nature of the sites all of these sites are small no property assembly is evident as i mentioned we have fragmented ownership patterns and the presence of an alley in the block is going to greatly hinder in fact is going to prevent unless that alley is vacated at some point um, full block depth for from occurring for any of these sites uh, we also looked at our land use and development regulations if the properties were to be uh, rezoned to the commercial corridor zoning district based on the existing zoning on the west side of this local street all of these properties when they develop commercially would be required to provide either a 10 or a 20 foot buffer along the west property line for many sites particularly sites that are fairly large that would not be um, a particular obstacle to, to developing those sites but for these sites that are rather small two and three lot platted sites that really reduces the flexibility in terms of where parking landscaping and other types of required site improvements can be located lastly uh, any traffic generated from commercial development from these sites would would likely be low uh, but would be added or introduced to a local street which uh, we try to prevent when we can uh, on the negative side this amendment would result in a loss of commercial land in the city uh, we are taking steps and we try to be more aggressive in protecting commercial lands however the amount of commercial land lost in this area is uh, just a little over three acres and at best we we find that these 10 sites collectively really represent sort of marginal marginal commercial lands so staff is recommending approval of this land use change to the single family future land use classification we have heard from two individuals one that supports this future land use amendment and i'll stand by later in case you have any questions for me thank you mr truby uh, this is a public hearing. If there are any members of the audience that wish to speak at this time, uh, please direct yourself to the podium uh, and state your name for the record. My name is Dean Pulley. I'm an adjacent landowner within the 500 foot notice area of this proposed amendment, uh, ordinance rather. Um, for all the reasons the city has stated, um, this is, appears to me to be very logical. Uh, my comment is that it lacks uh, necessary scope in planning. Um, the block immediately, let's see if that, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, let me uh, get, see if I can. There we go. Thanks. Okay. All right. The uh, this is this is the block in question, block 2005, um, and especially I was interested in the city's position on 
the single family uh, being more in character with the neighborhood, uh, reducing commercial traffic along the block face uh, and the small size of the lots not really particularly being a, a good use for commercial development. Uh, my comment is that block 2006, which the city typified as having mixed use, actually does not uh, and should be considered as part of this, or at least I would ask the council to uh, ask the city to consider this in their larger planning as well, this block. That block currently has no, unlike block 2005, which currently has one commercial development on it, on the western face of the block. Block 2006 has no commercial development at all. In fact, has uh, 16 or 15 residences and eight buildings on it, primarily multifamily. So changing the future use on this block and not considering the block um, immediately above it, which has all of the same attributes of that block uh, would seem to be short-sighted and just something that would have to be revisited later. Uh, notice on the eastern side of Andalusia, there's a very robust uh, P1 and pure commercial block that is already heavily developed in commercial. And also the eastern, also the uh, eastern side of the block face on Andalusia uh, is deeper. Uh, because it does not have a deeded alley, but those lots are deeper and more suitable for uh, commercial. But the western block face, which is identical to the block face in question right here on block 2006, really needs the same consideration that this block would have in order for all of this to work uh, seamlessly with the city's planning uh, and with the use of the infrastructure that's just been put in there, and especially the traffic flow patterns with so much of it surrounded all the way to Northeast 11th Terrace by uh, family uh, residential uses. Uh, since out of the 15 residences that are on that block, um, 14 of them are multifamily. Multifamily would also seem to be more suitable to uh, increasing density there. Um, thank you, council members. Thank you, city. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dean. We appreciate it. I think that's the first time we've seen a cell phone on the projector. It worked well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are there any other members of the audience that would wish to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. I'll open up to the commission. Any comments from the commissioners? Commissioner York. Um, this is for the city. Uh, you said that... Um, at one time, the comprehensive plan allowed single-family homes in the Pine Island District Commercial Corridor? Yes. Uh, the, probably a better way of saying that is that the comprehensive plan was not very specific in terms of whether or not some of our residential zoning districts were compatible with the Pylon Road District future land use classification. And it was, it was our planning's interpretation uh, for a couple of different reasons that um, our, our residential zoning districts, our, our former RD zoning district, our R1 zoning district, um, was consistent with the Pine Island Road District future land use. And again, that was, that was sort of an interpretation. That's how we, how we administered that future land use classification. We clarified that uh, in 2019, and we now have a table that appears in the future, le future land use element of our comprehensive plan. I think it's table 1.5. And it identifies all the future land use classifications in the city and also identifies all zoning districts that are consistent with those future land use classifications. And so we clarified during that change in 2019 that the commercial corridor zoning district 
is the only zoning district that is now considered to be consistent with the Pine Island Road District feature land use classification. So it was excluded then, the R1 classification was excluded. Yes, and two, yes. Two, okay. it, it, never, it, it no longer allowed us to, in, to interpret um, that language any other way now. It made it clear for us. As not prohibiting it anyway. That's it, right. It, okay. So what I don't understand is why in 2021 were permits issued and why wasn't the, um, I think the single family uh, R1 was also changed in 2019. So, and then we issued permits to build these houses in 2021. I don't know if we built, that's when the houses were built. I don't know when the permits. So there, there are three existing single family homes on those 10 sites. Right. Two, two of those permits were issued recently. Two of those were issued in air. They should not have been issued. They should not have been no. issued. Yeah, That's are correct. we doing, I mean, we've run across this before and then you have people who understandably, they've already built their house and they're living there um, and they don't want the classification, I mean, they're prohibited from doing so many things if their, um, the future land use in fact is commercial corridor and here they've got a single family home there, mm -hmm. but we've really dropped the ball uh, a number of times. Are we in any way attempting to make sure that the zoning and the future land use um, map are completely the same and not issuing permits anymore where they don't reflect the same exact use of the land? Yes, it, it, well, clearly it's never our intent to erroneously issue a permit when the zoning and the land use don't match. Um, these permits came in short, relatively shortly, I think, after the, the comp plan change. There were probably some training issues involved where there could have been some better training with some of our, our people in development services. And unfortunately, when you get the large volume of permits we get, you know, I don't know how many permits we've, we're going to handle this year, but it's going to be in the high five figures probably. There are, there are mistakes, unfortunately, that occasionally are made. And it, there's never been, and I take it there isn't now, particularly in the light of how backlogged we are now in light of the hurricane and the permits, you know, your office being so inundated with permits. But I mean, is there any group or task force that's charged with looking at future land use map and zoning to um, coordinate the two where they don't match? Or do we just do it as they come up? Uh, we do both. So we, we do look at, at this, at different areas of the city and try to identify any of those remaining vestiges where we have inconsistency with zoning and land use. But sometimes we have those inconsistencies pointed out to us before we notice them, for example. Sometimes that's by other city staff, sometimes it's by residents or by a realtor that calls and will say, hey, I've got this property here and it's got commercial professional future land use and, and residential zoning can my client build a house on it and we'll look at it and when we confirm that, that, that the land use and the zoning don't match, then that's when frequently we will initiate a case to try to resolve that inconsistency. So it happens in both, both ways. Thank you. Commissioner Apkin. Thank you, Chair. I think over the last couple of years that I've been a member of the uh, commission, we've seen several instances where we tried to get consistency in our land use. And as mentioned, uh, we've changed it to, to become that where it, what it should be versus what it, what it was based on that. And as a growing city, you're going you're gonna to encounter that, you know, all the time to where we were, where we thought we were going to go versus what we need to do at a particular time. So what we're saying is that, you know, this isn't something that's out of the ordinary. It's going to happen now and probably in the future. But just, you know, to clarify it, it's not a... Uh, thing that just occurs uh, rarely at, at, at occasion on occasion because the city's trying to, you know, take care of all the mistakes, so to speak, and like I said, get consistent zoning throughout the city 
but <laughs> we're a pretty large land mass and that's gonna take a while to catch up. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? I would just like to echo uh, what we've heard from the commission today um, and what's also what we've heard from uh, Mr. Uh, Chad Boykin regarding the maybe an overreach uh, that the city did in 2019, trying to go after the good goal of um, acquiring more commercial property, uh, but maybe overzealous a little bit. And we did bring in uh, several properties that were already pre-constructed with single family or multifamily. Um, and clearly that puts a, a large onus on those family owners, those homeowners that are trying to uh, sell the property, refinance the property, or eventually build. Uh, but with that said, uh, I think the commission's asked many times for the city to go out and seek these properties. Uh, this was a city initiated uh, ordinance. That means that the onus wasn't on the property owners to bring this through the process. I think that's great. And uh, I'd like to see more of it um, similar to the comments that we heard from the, uh, the audience today. Uh, with those comments made, is there any motion from the commission? Move motion to, to approve the... We'll take a motion uh, to approve ordinance 24-20 uh, through by uh, Commissioner Botana and a, do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Benny. Madam City Clerk, will you call the roll? Apking? Aye. Benny? Aye. Botana? Aye. Marker? Aye. Severson? Aye. York? Aye. Schwartz? Aye. All ayes, motion carries. Thank you. So we'll move on to item eight, and that is citizens' input. Uh, I'd like to open the floor to any citizens uh, or members of the audience that would like to make comment. Uh, please direct yourself to the podium and state your name for the record. <laughs> seeing none, we'll close it. Oh, seeing one. <laughs> we only got one bang. We need two, so you're good. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, for the record, uh, Art Castellano's architect, 1228 Lafayette Street, uh, architect, uh, contractor, designer, planning. Um, so we've, we've been in the Cape for 28 years with my partner. Uh, I've been there about 10 years now. And I'm just going to bring up an issue. I'm, I'm trying to get relief on the uh, table for the South Cape District, Commercial District, Table 6.1.7B, uh, 125 to 60,000 square foot. Uh, per unit, one on the bar residential area, one car per 100 square foot spaces. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, recently, we, we met with staff on a project that was uh, under due diligence. Uh, the, the building was a two-story, 15,000 square feet, 10,000 on the first floor, 5,000 on the second floor. The client had a beautiful plan, um, bar space, restaurant space, second floor entertainment space, everything that South Cape needed. Um, we ran the numbers. The current space has 38 cars, 40 cars. Um, we ran the numbers and went through the bar district and it came up with uh, originally 140 cars that were required on-site parking. That's impossible to have that many cars on that site. 95% of the of the parcels in South Cape are 100 by 200. So that is why a lot of those vacant parcels go unbuilt because I can't put 20 cars on a 4,000 square foot building. It's just an, uh, un uneconomic. So I'm asking for relief on that to see if we can get better square footage numbers for parking versus ratios or versus building ratios there. Um, we ended up, there's a 0.75 factor for, for parking. I think we ended up with 68, still impossible. Uh, we're trying to see if we can get relief with uh, uh, parking nearby agreements. Uh, but the code, this code is very strict. It's on-site parking only. So the uh, client walked away. The last time I saw him, he going in the direction of Fort Myers, which is un unfortunate because I've seen a lot of these projects that come into my office on a monthly basis that people are asking me, what can we do with this vacant property? You can build a 2,000 square foot building, that's it, and 20 cars. Well, 20 cars and 2,000 square foot is uneconomical for these small parcels. So I'm asking you to see if we can do something down the road and look and re-look at, re these numbers in the South Cape District Entertainment District. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other members of the audience that wish to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll close citizens' input. Uh, moving along to item nine, and that's staff updates. Any updates from staff? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number 10, other business. Any other business to discuss? Seeing none, we'll move on to member comments. Do we have any comments from the members? Just had one. I, well, I, I had sent a request to a couple of people on the staff because I'm new to this uh, to see when I could uh, get like a separate appointment come to, to invest some time to learn more about the process that you people use to develop this stuff just so I have a better understanding when I read it. Is it who, who would I talk to about setting up something? Uh, Mike Struve, uh, again, for the planning division. My understanding is, and I was told this this week, that um, it's been a practice for our deputy uh, director in development services to schedule meetings with new planning and zoning commission members to go over sort of responsibilities and expectations and to answer questions you might have about process and how case, cases come before you. So I would expect those invitations to come out shortly from his office to all of you new members. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner York. I just wanted to suggest also that you um, reach out to our liaison from council and possibly set up a meeting with um, Mr. Welsh because I found that very helpful at the time. It was a different liaison person, but that would also be probably helpful. Thank you. Any other comments? I'd like to take the time to recognize and uh, say thank you to Shauna. Unfortunately, this will be the last time that she's working with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Oh. I think from the entire commission, we thank you. We appreciate your tenure and we will miss you. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, uh, we will move on to item 12 and that is the time and date of our next meeting. The next regular meeting for the Planning and Zoning Commission is scheduled for Wednesday, April 5th, 2023 at 9 a.m. in council chambers. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Seeing no nays, we are adjourned. <laughs>